So when you have a look at this, what does that indicate to you that we ought to expect if we want to solve this equation? You would need four equations. Okay? Now thankfully for us, we are not actually trying to solve this equation. We're just trying to find out whether there is a solution or not. There is one last piece of information that we haven't written down though. Currency. I'm not going to do this because, you know, I value not being poor. But if I had this, right, here's a, here's a piece of currency, okay? Uh, if I cut this in half, what are each of the halves worth? They're worth nothing, are they, right? Because you can't have half a note. It's like, hey, it's like, can you break my, my, my five dollar note? Sure, okay, let me get my businesses. That doesn't work. It's not like 250, 250, okay? So therefore, what that implies is that P, Q, R, and S are not just any numbers. They are a specific kind of number, and you have language for this, right? What kind of numbers are they? They're going to be whole numbers. Integers is close, but they're not just integers, because integers can also be negative, right? At least you'd hope that I don't have negative, negative $5 notes. It's like, oh man, I'm really, really short, right? So what I would say is, here's my third and final piece of information, P, Q, R, and S. I'm going to borrow some notation from a previous lesson. They are integers, do you remember that one? That are positive, right? So it's more than just integers, I'm a bit more specific here. This is it. It's not four equations, but it's all I need. You've got equation one, equation two, now let's play, okay? And there's not much you can do with equation one and two together, right? Anyone want to make any suggestions of how I could put them together, how I could combine them? Simultaneously, I can combine them in a variety of ways. I could, I could multiply them by things, I could add them. What kind of operation do you think would be most suitable to try and simplify what's going on here? I think subtraction is the way to go. Here's why. When you have a look at just regular simultaneous equations, you basically have two techniques at your disposal. Does anyone remember what the two techniques are? One starts with an S, one starts with an E. You can solve by substitution. What that would mean is you would say do something like this, this is equation one, this is equation two. So this came from equation two. You'd take that and you'd substitute it. Everywhere you saw a y in equation one, you'd, you'd swap it, okay? What was the other method? Elimination. elimination. We use elimination when you've got, uh, you know, things like this. You see how that plus minus that, and that y, minus y, they could cancel out really easily. When you have a look at here, do you see why elimination and subtraction is a sensible thing to do? Why is it? Yeah, you can eliminate this guy out of the equation, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Equation 2, take away equation 1. P will cancel, so that leaves me with this many Q's, this many R's, and this many S's. Raj? I, I just didn't understand how, because isn't a thousand S already a million? So, that's a good question. This comes back to what are P, Q, R, and S? I admit I didn't write it. So P, Q, R, and S are how many of each note do you have? So for example, I might have a single thousand dollar note. So a thousand S would be a thousand. Or I might have 17 thousand dollar notes, in which case a thousand S would be 17,000. Does that make sense? So P, Q, R, and S are not the value of each note, they're the quantity of each note. Does that make sense? Yeah. Correct. So yeah, it's the money value. Does that mean that a thousand S is already a million dollars? Well, what's S equal to? A thousand. No, S is not a thousand. S is any number I want it to be. It's how many, how many of these thousand dollar notes do I have? If you had exactly a thousand, a thousand dollar notes, then yes, that would be a million. But you might have no thousand dollar notes. I don't have any thousand dollar notes. So that would be zero times a thousand. So the point is S is a variable. Right? It's not a thousand, it's how many thousands do I have. Okay. What have I got on the right hand side? Half a million. Okay, so what do I do with this? Is there anything obvious that screams out at you that we could do that would simplify this? I can, I can divide this side all by nine, can't I? Um, does 500,000 go into nine? Or does 9 go into 5? It doesn't, does it? Okay. So watch what happens. If you divide by 9, you get Q plus 11R plus 111S. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, when you divide this, you're going to get, I think, 
65,555 and five ninths of a dollar. Someone can tell me if that's right or not. Like I'm just trying to remember. And just looking roughly, you can see it's gotta be around there, right? Now, there's not much else you can do with this, right? There's not, not many places to go. Um, don't worry, it's not that I just know crazy arithmetic. I've done this problem, okay? I've used this, I've used this. What was the final piece of information that we talked about before? They're all positive, and not just positive, but positive integers, positive whole numbers, okay? Do you see that presents a problem down here, right? If each of these is a positive whole number, and you're multiplying each of them by positive whole numbers, there's no way, there's no combination of those, there's no Q, R, or S that could give you that guy. That guy's the problem, right? <laughs> I didn't say it was wrong, I just asked you if you were sure, which are very different things, okay? <laughs> so how would I explain this, right? My conclusion would be, I would say, but Q, R, and S are positive integers, right? Therefore, this thing over here, Q plus 11R plus 111S, that's also, that's also a positive integer. Do you agree? When you add these positive integers together uh, and multiply them by more positive integers, you only get positive integers out the other end. Okay? 55,555 and 5 ninths is not, it's not a positive integer. Therefore, there are no solutions. Does that make sense? Do you see the way I logically constructed that?